Hi, I'm Sean Williamson. I'm the Director of Genital Urinary Pathology here at the Cleveland Clinic. And today I'd like to talk about a topic that can be a bit challenging in genital urinary pathology, and that's diagnosis of renal cancer, particularly in the metastatic and, and high-grade renal cancer setting. So it may be that we encounter a biopsy of the primary tumor in the patient who has suspected metastatic renal cancer, or in fact that we encounter a biopsy of a metastatic lesion which is suspected to be of renal origin. And in both cases, the main question would be whether we can confirm that to be a primary renal cell carcinoma or something else. Uh, so here's sort of a flow chart going through some options of what may happen in the biopsy setting of a suspected metastatic renal cancer. So we encounter a biopsy. The main question first would be whether this is in fact a renal cell carcinoma or not. And if it is a renal cell carcinoma, something that we should try to do as much as possible is to try to subclassify it. And the main question for subclassification is whether we're dealing with a clear cell or a non-clear cell subtype of renal cancer. So if we have a clear cell tumor, uh, there are certainly some recommendations for targeted therapy in major cancer guidelines, uh, such as drugs that target the VEGF or mTOR pathways or even uh, immunotherapy. Uh, if we encounter a tumor that we think is a non-clear cell subtype of renal cancer, there are targeted therapies as well. Uh, those certainly overlap quite a bit with those of clear cell renal cancer, uh, but they may differ slightly in the recommendations for the first or second line agents. And so, if at all possible, we should try to distinguish clear cell from non-clear cell subtype. Although, as I'll talk about as we go through here, it may not always be possible uh, in 100% of cases. And then thirdly, if you have a tumor that does look like it is a renal cell carcinoma, but it is an aggressive uh, histology, certain select aggressive histologies like sarcomatoid or medullary uh, carcinoma, there may be slight modifications to the treatment uh, recommendations for these, these patients, although these are not extremely well codified in the current guidelines, but there are some options for using other therapies such as cytotoxic therapies in those patients. So for the most part, clear cell and non-clear cell subtypes are our main two categories. But there are uh, some aggressive histologies like sarcomatoid and medullary carcinoma, among perhaps a few others, which the treatment may differ slightly. On the other hand, if we have a tumor and we think it's not a primary renal cell carcinoma, uh, what would the treatment options look like in that circumstance? Well, one possibility is if the patient has a renal mass, it might be a urothelial carcinoma. And if so, the recommendation would most likely be for cytotoxic chemotherapy in that uh, setting rather than the renal cell carcinoma targeted agents that I mentioned earlier. So that would certainly be a different thera therapeutic path and we should try to make that distinction um, if at all possible. Another possibility, although fairly rare, is a metastasis to the kidney from a cancer of another origin. And the most common uh, etiology of metastatic cancer to the kidney is that of the lung. So lung cancer is probably the most frequent to metastasize to the kidney, in which case that patient would most likely be treated uh, similarly to lung cancer. Uh, something to keep in mind with metastatic cancer to the kidney is that this can be deceptive. It can occur 10 or 20 years after the first diagnosis of the, re of the uh, other primary tumor. And it can be solitary and unilateral, mimicking a primary tumor. And it can even extend into the collecting system, mimicking a urothelial component. Uh, so that is something to keep on your radar, although rare. If you encounter lymphoma involving the kidney, then of course the treatment would be in keeping with that of a, of a lymphoma, a systemic treatment for lymphoma. So here's an example of a, a biopsy of a renal mass. You can see here um, some fibrin, some hemorrhage, and then some atypical cells. Let's look at that a little bit higher magnification. You can see that there are cells with prominent nucleoli, so that would be certainly in keeping with a renal cell carcinoma. There is clear cytoplasm, although some of the cytoplasm is slightly eosinophilic. So I think this might be difficult to be entirely certain of the renal cell carcinoma subtype just looking at this histologically alone. But here we have immunohistochemistry for PAX8. You can see nice nuclear staining for PAX8 here, which is probably our best tool to confirm the primary renal origin uh, of a tumor, either in the primary tumor itself or in the metastatic setting. So that's probably our best tool with a few caveats. Renal uh, origin is one of the main tumor types that's positive for PAX8, although as you probably know, other tumors are also positive for PAX8, including those of the thyroid or, or the gynecologic tract. So although this is a relatively specific marker, it's not entirely specific. And I'd also like to caution that, uh, although we think of PAX8 as labeling primarily renal cell carcinoma when we're talking about the kidney, uh, there is some overlap with upper urinary tract urothelial carcinoma 
in which those can sometimes also label for Pax8. So if you're thinking of the distinction between renal cell carcinoma and urothelial carcinoma, I would recommend to use markers both in favor of and against uh, both diagnoses rather than just putting all the emphasis on, on one marker alone. So here's an example of a case which I think was, was quite deceptive. You can see this lung biopsy with a bit of lung tissue on the right-hand side of the field, and then on the left, very subtle, but some atypical cells here. And so we knew that this particular patient had a history of, of renal cancer, and so we were suspecting it to be a metastasis. Uh, but one of your, some of your simplest tools when you're in this scenario would be to, to look at things other than the pathology itself. Firstly, does the patient have a renal mass? If they currently have a very large renal mass and you're suspecting metastatic renal cancer, then that would certainly be supportive. If they have a very small renal mass, I would be a little bit more skeptical uh, that a metastasis might be something else rather than originating from the kidney. If they don't have a current renal mass, do they have a well-established history of renal cancer? Or if you're not able to find that history, do they have a, a missing kidney on their imaging studies, in which case maybe digging a little further would be able to verify that there was a renal cell carcinoma removed a long time ago. I would be very cautious if you have a tumor that looks like it might be a metastatic renal cell carcinoma, but then the patient has both kidneys and imaging studies are showing uh, no definite renal mass or an inconspicuous subtle renal mass. I would be very cautious in that setting because it's quite rare to have metastatic renal cancer when the primary tumor is either very small or not appreciable at all on imaging studies. So it certainly is theoretically possible that you have a small renal mass with metastases, but I'd be very cautious in that setting and think about any other possibility before being certain, and perhaps issue a diagnosis that says this is suggestive of renal origin, but not definitive due to um, the, the lack of a definite renal cancer history or, or definite renal mass. So here's an example of Pax8 staining in that particular example of the lung metastasis. You can see there's nuclear staining, and again, this patient we knew had a history of renal cell carcinoma, so we were a bit more confident. Once we can make a diagnosis of metastatic renal cancer, can we subtype it? And as I mentioned earlier, there are some therapeutic differences for clear cell versus non-clear cell subtype. Uh, one of the simplest and most cost-effective options, again, is not to do anything fancy to the biopsy itself, but to look at the history. So if we have a, a good history of renal cancer, can we look at that specimen again or even check the report and, and find out the subtype of the original renal cancer? If we don't see a subtype in, in the original report maybe 10 or 20 years ago, just kind of a general diagnosis of renal cell carcinoma was given. Uh, so maybe we could re-review that specimen if it's available in, in our laboratory or in our hospital. If that's not possible, maybe we could even request the primary tumor for review from another hospital. This might be more effective than doing extensive studies on a small biopsy with very limited tumor cells in the metastatic setting. But of course, that's not always possible. Uh, sometimes the primary tumor has never been removed because the patient has metastatic disease, or perhaps it was done somewhere else and we really can't obtain it right now. And so immunohistochemistry is another option to try to subclassify uh, renal cancer in the metastatic setting. So here's an example of labeling for carbonic anhydrase 9, which I think is probably one of the best markers that we can use to try to confirm a diagnosis of clear cell subtype of metastatic renal cancer. It will show diffuse membranous staining, uh, as you can see here in most clear cell tumors, although that can occasionally be decreased if the tumor is, is high grade or poorly differentiated. Carbonic anhydrase 9 is part of the von Hippel-Lindau gene pathway, so that is typically mutated in clear cell renal cell carcinoma. And so in these tumors, you typically have a very marked uh, increased labeling with diffuse membranous distribution in clear cell tumors. Uh, something to be aware of, though, is that it is also part of the hypoxia or ischemia pathway, and so you can have focal staining in other renal tumors, especially if there is ischemia or necrosis nearby. And uh, I would also caution that if we're talking about the setting of cancer of unknown primary, I would not use this as one of your first line markers. I would first look at Pax8 and as, as I mentioned earlier, the history, is there a history of a renal mass? Um, if we don't have a history of a renal mass, this marker is not very specific for a renal cancer and it can stain other types of cancer. So in the, when you know that you have a renal cell carcinoma, it is very helpful for distinguishing clear cell from non-clear cell subtype. But if you don't know that you have uh, a primary renal cancer, uh, it can stain a number of other things and so shouldn't be used as a very specific in that context.
So here's an example of a papillary renal cell carcinoma. You can see sort of eosinophilic cells, papillary architecture, and a little calcification there in the lower left, uh, resembling a somoma body. And in this particular case, labeling for carbonic anhydrase 9 is mostly negative, but you can see focal staining in the upper right, uh, upper right side there, which uh, would be indicative of you know, focal ischemic changes, perhaps in the papillary structures of the, of the tumor there. But the, in the same tumor, you can see diffuse staining for cytokeratin 7, which we don't usually see in clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Now, if you don't have access to uh, carbonic anhydrase 9 staining, some other markers that are typical of clear cell renal cell carcinoma include uh, staining for CD10, which is not entirely specific, but frequently positive, minimal or limited cytokeratin 7 labeling, um, variable labeling for amicar, frequent positivity for vimentin, uh, but all of these are not super specific, and so I tend to gravitate toward carbonic anhydrase 9, which at least to me is the most helpful for clear cell versus non-clear cell subtype of renal cancer. Uh, here's an example of another lung metastasis. This was sampled via fine needle aspiration. So this is a, a cell block specimen. You can see cells with clear cytoplasm. Uh, again, using Pax8 immunohistochemistry, you can see that they're positive in keeping with a renal cell carcinoma. And so let's say that, for example, this tumor showed minimal or negative uh, labeling for carbonic anhydrase 9. What I often do in that context is report this as consistent with metastatic renal cell carcinoma. I may not give a definitive subtype in the final diagnosis. And then in the comment, I might say, although the morphology is suggestive of clear cell subtype, the carbonic anhydrous 9 staining is limited and therefore not definitive, although we are still somewhat suspicious of, of a clear cell subtype. Occasionally, I have had the question from an oncologist of whether we can do anything to further refine that, since they want to know whether to use clear cell or non-clear cell directed therapies in the metastatic setting. And what we've occasionally done is use molecular testing if that's available to you. And so in this context, if you have a tumor like this, it's not labeling very much for carbonic anhydrase 9, but you do have molecular testing showing mutation of the VHL gene, I would think that that is fairly supportive to go ahead and consider this a clear cell renal cancer, since VHL mutations are present in a very high percentage of, of clear cell renal cell carcinomas um, and, and uh, not very much so in any other subtype of renal cancer. So just to illustrate the distinction of renal cell carcinoma versus urothelial carcinoma, this is actually a resection specimen. So we're not even looking at a biopsy here, but a, a large resection specimen of a primary renal mass. And you can see this kind of mixoid epithelioid morphology here with tumor cells that are kind of loosely connected to each other. And my differential diagnosis for this was a sarcoma versus a urothelial carcinoma or a, a sarcomatoid renal cell carcinoma. And this particular case was involving the renal pelvis, although there was no um, appreciable in situ papillary urothelial component in the, in the renal pelvis. And so using immunohistochemistry, chemistry, this tumor did label for cytokeratin, suggesting that it was indeed a carcinoma. And here you can see only extremely rare focal staining for P40 or also uh, for P63, there was extremely rare focal staining. And so to me, I favored this being a sarcomatoid urothelial carcinoma based on that pattern of labeling. Uh, although I think we were only able to achieve sort of a favorite diagnosis in this case due to the, the lack of uh, overt differentiation in this particular case. And as I mentioned earlier, there can be some overlap in Pax8 and GATA3 immunoreactivity between uh, upper urinary tract urothelial carcinoma and renal cell carcinoma. So I would be cautious in that setting and use multiple markers both in favor of and against uh, all the differential diagnoses that you're considering. So again, going back to just our sort of flow chart here, um, Pax8 is, to me, the most helpful marker for supporting a primary renal cell lineage. If we're trying to subtype clear cell versus non-clear cell, carbonic anhydrase 9 is sort of the best marker that we have right now. It's not perfect, but it's the best that, that, I, uh, that I find in practice. If you're thinking of urothelial carcinoma, markers like GATA3, P63, or P40 are helpful. Although, as I mentioned earlier, there can be some overlap, and I would use markers of, of both lines of differentiation um, to evaluate the differential diagnosis whenever possible. Um, if you're thinking of a metastasis from another cancer, like for example, lung cancer would be often positive for TTF1. You could use those organ-specific markers. And then again, if you're thinking of a lymphoma, you could use lymphocyte markers, most commonly B-cell lymphomas, uh, such as those shown there. And just an important caution in the diagnosis of lymphoma involving the kidney, you can have P63 labeling 
in uh, lymphomas. And so if you're thinking of a poorly differentiated carcinoma versus a lymphoma involving the kidney, uh, just be aware of the fact that P63 can also be occasionally positive in lymphomas and to use other markers like cytokeratins and lymphocyte markers if you're in that situation. So in summary, uh, the most important thing that we can do in the metastatic renal cancer setting is just try to confirm whether we have indeed a primary renal cell carcinoma versus some other carcinoma, urothelial or of another origin. And if at all possible, it is helpful for treatment to try to subclassify into clear cell or non-clear cell subtypes, although that may not always be achievable without going to more extensive testing like molecular testing. But if at all possible, it's helpful for us to uh, try to do that to guide the oncologist therapy. Uh, so thanks for uh, tuning in and I hope this was uh, somewhat helpful.